So we just started this week doing training sessions in the garage in the morning. So a cardio session when I get up and then come back and eat, do any work on the computer I need to get done or sometimes I need to go straight to the gym and have clients to train and stuff like that. Normally I wake up, take Ray out, give her a little snack, and then start breakfast and get ready for the day. Eventually Christian wakes up. I'm usually doing my journaling and stuff. I leave for training and then he takes Ray and they go to his training. Wait, I want to show you something. Okay. okay, this person's on WAG, and 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 this person's on WAG, and, and they WAG. they support them on WAG. That's me. She does. Christian likes that picture, but I think it's embarrassing. What's embarrassing about it? I like look kind of weird, and it's just like I'm standing in dirt and wearing heels. Oh, good. <laughs> you should put that on YouTube. I have an interview quote from you about a year and a half ago saying, I used to have to eat a bagel every single morning for breakfast, yeah. but I learned I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> but it seems like we have regressed. Yeah, we've, we've come back around. Uh, well, like when I get closer to the competition, I'll stop again. Like I'll stop eating the bagels, but we're still, we're like five weeks out now. So I'm still in that like, like we're not quite cutting yet. Like my weight has been really good. So it's kind of one of those things. And that's not a nut butter per se, that's a cookie Christian, butter. Christian, you don't have to talk about it. <laughs> Is that why you like turn the label away? No, I didn't turn it away on purpose. The types of food I'll be eating will, will change depending on what, what time of the season I'm in and you'll see better quality of food at some parts of the year than others. We obviously have a couple of things throughout the day that we eat that aren't necessarily the best for you, but are like, oh, this is like my treat, or like, this is like what I'm going to, I like to eat, so I'm going to make it work and, and then like try to get the rest of the food as a, a higher quality. I always had journals, but now I have like kind of purpose while I'm journaling. My first section is like write something that I'm grateful for every day and then write what my intention is for the day. Maybe it has to do with weightlifting and maybe it doesn't. And then I'll like write out my affirmations and then I usually do like like 20 minutes of Bible study and then I read another book like um, like more of a motivational book or whatever and I'll take notes on both of those and then that's it, then I'm done. It kind of helps me stay grounded and not so in my head about things and stay present. And, and then to actually be able to notice like the good things that are going on and not get so worked up about any of the stressors or pressures or anything that I do feel. Mornings are usually cardio sessions. So like we'll do a bike, uh, a run, row, erg, ski erg, whatever cardio piece we have, we're going to usually do intervals on it for either heart rate or we're looking for uh, specific RPMs or we'll have some type of goal with it. But it's usually a monostructural, you know, cardio piece. And then sometimes we'll do, you know, some scap jacks and PT work after it. Usually it shouldn't take more than 30 to 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing these kind of just as like almost warm-up pieces for the day. So nothing crazy as far as like intensity or, or pacing goes um, if it doesn't call for it in the morning. As like obviously as the season progresses and stuff and we get, depending on what competitions we're doing, how far out we are, obviously the intensity and the goal will change for each of these sessions. Um, I don't get my workouts until I get there, so I don't know. Um, yesterday was kind of heavy, so today's probably like a little bit lighter, like technique driven exercises in the morning, and then in the afternoon might be just like squats and bodybuilding. But I, I don't know for sure, so we'll see.
So if you think about our sport, it's an endurance sport. Like there's only a few, one or two at the most strength events. Um, yeah, you'll see heavier barbells in workouts and you need to be able to cycle that stuff, but there's only maximal strength events for a very small percentage of what our competition events would be. So if you look at the training that a lot of the competitive athletes were doing and are doing, you see it's like very weightlifting biased for a lot of programs and a lot of um, athletes percentage of time that they're training these things. And it's like, then there's an issue. Like if you look at that, to me, like why are, why are we training and why is it normal for an athlete to have an hour and a half of weightlifting and strength work and then only 30 to 40 minutes of actual like aerobic work in a day. This year is the only qualifying year. Um, it started at Worlds last year, was the first one. Um, so I have to do eight international competitions within like an 18 month span. Um, so all of my competitions are kind of strategically placed so that I can still be training and improving, getting better, but get the qualification in that I need. And then hopefully I do well enough at the qualification events that I qualify for Tokyo. It's kind of like now or never now because we're in the throes with it. Like we just did Worlds and then I'll have Pan Am Trials and then I'll have a competition, an international competition in Vegas in March, like the next weekend. And then Pan Ams, Pan Am Games, hopefully, and then like so on and so forth. So it's just gonna be a lot this year. Obviously, you're going to follow some type of guidelines as far as like getting some good carbs in that can fuel you throughout the day. I know kind of you know usually what and how much I need to be eating throughout the day, just having done it so long um, that I can be like, oh, that was a big breakfast. I don't need to eat as much or I've been trying to fill my my food as as quick as I can throughout the day. So trying to get done a little earlier than I generally would. So um, usually I'm eating between 9 a.m. and my last meal, I'll try to get done around uh, 9 p.m. So like not going much longer than that. And if I can, I would love to shorten it, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. One day of like, you know, perfect or timing everything right is not gonna, it's like gonna be the sum of all your days and the average, right? So like if you can do something consistently for a year and a half, I think, and it's, you know, less potent than something you can only do for three or four months, but you can do it like you're doing something like 100% and it's kind of consuming everything that you've got, then you might not be able to keep that up as long as if you kind of find a little better balance with that. So I think that's what it's all about is just finding balance of like, okay, this is not, like you see a lot of people that can do something for short amounts of time, whether it's competing, whether it's eating, whether it's um, living a certain lifestyle, they can only do that for you know X amount of time. And then they kind of peter off because it, they're just all in or nothing. And so I think that's a mindset that's kind of problematic. So try to just find the best balance and way to just continue eating well, but not too anal about all the other things that you can get anal about with your nutrition and with all that. First we're doing heat 
and then he'll ice me and then do a little bit of massage and then stretch me out and then that's it. I'm definitely like able to warm up a lot faster. I don't have to do as much recovery stuff on my own, but like this is all the same stuff that I was doing before, just he's helping me with it now, so it's nice because I don't have to think about it as much. Right before AO3, I had a really bad back spasm, like probably 10 days out. So it was like supposed to be my last heavy week. And it happened on like a, a Wednesday, like on our lighter day. And I came straight in here and he worked on me for like the, la the next three days. And then by the time it was like time to taper, I was like feeling better and able to like move around where normally my back spasms last for weeks. I think that we do a good job of communicating throughout the day. And it might be simple, like I'll text him about my workout after my morning session and then we'll like kind of talk about it and then he'll tell me about his workout and we'll kind of talk about it. And then like at night we'll talk more about like the afternoon trainings and his coaching day and stuff. So I think that helps a lot, but like on the weekends, we spend a lot of time together and like I'll train at my gym on Saturday and then a lot of times, and then he'll train at his gym on Saturday, but then a lot of times he'll come to my gym when he's done and then we'll sauna together as like with my team and then we'll like have the rest of the day to hang out together. And then on Sundays, it's just me and him always. Like we just um, go to church together and like sometimes we go run errands and like just hang out. Lately, I've been do trying really hard to like, no matter what my day is, whether it was a good workout or a bad workout or whatever, to remember that like he deserves my best. So even if I'm bummed about something or emotional about something or whatever, that like, like he, he didn't do that. It's not like, I don't know. So basically I just try to give him my best so I can like, suck up my feelings like we can talk about them and stuff but I don't need to be in a bad mood because of that or sad because of that or even and if I'm really happy like obviously that's different because it's easier to like live with somebody that's ha happy about something so like just recognizing the things that he's going through also and like being more sensitive to him is something that I'm trying to always do and get better at Well, I've gone through like a lot of phases with my mentality and like I think that the most important thing for me now after having learned so many different things and what I should be doing or what I shouldn't be doing and what's beneficial and what's not. The evolution in, in your life is the same as evolution in weightlifting. Like, you learn, okay, nutrition is important, okay, sleep is important, okay, recovery is important, okay, all these specific little details. Your mindset's important, journaling, meditation, all these different things, they're all so great. I think that the biggest thing at this point is, is being able to take whatever comes at you, being able to still be motivated when nobody's around, to still be motivated when you don't feel like being there. I'm still, I still feel like I am being rigid, but if something doesn't go perfectly according to my plan, nothing happens. Like nothing bad is going to happen. It's just an opportunity to either grow, get better there, or use it as like, okay, this is a distraction. What are you gonna do with this distraction? Because you can't control everything around you. You can't control how you feel one day. You can't control if someone is mean to you. You can't control if you said the wrong thing and then upset somebody else. You can't control any of those things. All you can control is like, how do you, how do you respond from that? Everyone used to have the same season, right? Open, regionals, games. And then you'd pepper in some uh, Wadapalooza or Dubai Fitness Championships 
or granite games, you'd pepper in some competitions off season. Now you can kind of tailor your season um, specifically for where you plan on qualifying. If, if your goal is to make the games and compete at the games and do the best you can, you can really game it a little different depending on where you're planning on qualifying, whether you're planning on qualifying out of the Open, um, this two-stage Open where you take the national champions or you plan on qualifying out of a sanctioned event, um, any one of the 16 they have, uh, you can tailor it for your strengths and kind of in your own lane, so to speak. For us, we've got so much going on and so many changes. We're kind of just staying consistent with the training and on our program like we normally would. Once it is set after this year, I think it'll be easier to fall into a, a good rhythm and a good consistent season and see what I like better. It's gonna be a lot of just adapt and overcome whatever circumstance and whatever the qualifying season brings. Like I don't really have like a set like, okay, I'm planning on qualifying for the games at this sanctional or during the Open, and this is where, what I'm gearing up for. It's more so like 2020 um, is, is the, the time that we'll see, I think, a lot of the fruits of the labor right now coming to fruition. And so, especially with everything we have going on with, you know, Jessica's qualifying for Olympics and all of those events, it's, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise to be able to take a step back um, and be there for her a little bit more and make sure that she has everything she needs to get to the to get to her goals which are a little bit more um, right in front of her than necessarily mine are.